Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome, welcome back. If you have, my intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the energies that I've been feeling and talk a little bit about well, this is number two of a video that I just did. Um, so I am without going into what I feel is going has happened with the moon and what has happened with the planets, I'll share a short version um, from my perspective. And then I'll go into a little bit of what the abbreviation of that is in a nutshell. So by the way, bear with me. Thank you for bearing with me. I've got a little bit of um, an upgrade going on in my body, so to speak. I've been a little under the weather. It's given me an opportunity to um, gather my energy to reset and to um, go within and also to reorganize some of the energies that have been very scattered for me over the past month. Um, I feel like I've been doing a lot of in integrating um, and it's, you know, being sick isn't always a bad thing. In fact, if we can not judge it, oftentimes it can bring us many gifts Everything from everything is different for me, um, and it keeps changing. And that's just my own perspective and my own my own version of reality, I guess, that I'm sharing with you guys. I was shown. I'll be sharing some writings soon. Um, I did a video on YouTube. If you're interested, recently on one of my more recent writings, and I was decoding the codes that I write. Um, I'll be doing a lot more of those for any of you word nerds out there or anybody who's read some of my writings and gone, what is she talking about? <laughs> you might watch the video and still go, what is she talking about? <laughs> but I've been guided that a lot of the things that I've shared um, are from, they were future. How do I? basically future they were from they were from the future so a lot of the writings i shared a year ago um are valid now a lot of the sessions that i did a year ago <laughs> uh, i've had a few people email me recently so thank you for that because it always feels good to have someone who i've worked with reach out and connect and share their experiences and i just want to give a quick shout out to joshua and holly and um Marcus, um, I just haven't had a chance to reply to some of your emails, but I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful to everyone that I've ever had the opportunity to share time with. Um, well, we all share time together, right? But work together in session because I'm finally having some of the beautiful beings I've worked with say, oh, I didn't get what you were saying. And all of a sudden now here it is. And that as um, anybody out there that's watching this, who's a healer, which we're all healers, right? But they do that for their, maybe they're um, an intuitive, which we're all intuitive. Yes, I understand that. But somebody that's doing it for perhaps their love and they're doing it for um, their daily practice with other people. Um, I'd like to share that we all go through at least from my perspective, feelings of self-doubt and feelings of we're not sure if what we're doing is really, um, really helping or really getting through to others or helping others on their journey. And then we start to second guess our, our um, gifts or our abilities. And one of the biggest, I think, most important things for us to do right now is support each other and honor one another in our paths and have compassion and to interact with one another because this does not only clarify for some of us what those abilities are, um, but it also helps to validate some of those abilities for us. And I've talked about this before, but I think it's still always important to share that. So I'm grateful for, for everyone who has um, given me feedback about that. I tend to work and when I write things out, it's a year ahead of time or six months ahead of time. So at the time, it may not make any sense. The reason I'm sharing this with you guys in this way is this is how oftentimes we'll have a premonition 
and we'll we'll pass it off as not important or we'll we'll have something come up synchronistically and we'll go oh well that was just a coincidence and then six months later something shows up or we ask for something and we expect it to come immediately and when it doesn't show up for us we forget about it or we get angry and frustrated that it hasn't shown up for us and then all of a sudden a month later it shows up for us when we least expect it how many of us have had that happen i know i have and so um i find that happens with me a lot and these synchronicities are um sometimes they can be in the form of dreams i'm being guided to talk about this because i had somebody ask me the other day about synchronicities again and i haven't talked about that in a while so i thought it might be good to bring that up they can show up in the form of a conversation for us um if i get permission from one of the one of the um clients that i worked with and friends um in session to share their experience i will but uh, I will share one, uh, one experience I had with a friend um, I had seen, and thank you for allowing me to share this, Jess. Um, I had seen a relationship in the, on the horizon, and I had described what this looked like. And it was kind of confusing. And, you know, we recorded and talked about it. And sure enough, she said six months later, it kind of showed up for her in that way. And some things became very clear about the images that I was receiving. So if you guys are receiving images, I guess I'm going to go into talk about, about claircognizance and clairaudience and, and all of that a little bit. And I'll, I'll make my third video about my first video, which was the light language that I was doing. Because this has come up a lot. We, we tend to doubt that what we're hearing is real. We tend to doubt our abilities. We tend to think that we're not hearing or seeing or getting conversations with our guides. And I can assure you that that isn't the case. It just feels that way from my perspective. Everybody's different. If someone has completely disconnected themselves, how do you disconnect yourself? How are you so out of touch, right? Not you, I'm just saying you in general. How can we become so out of touch that we don't recognize these things? It's not necessarily that we're so out of touch or we're so disconnected. That can be the case. Sometimes it's just that we're not used to, we don't know what to look for. We are in the habit of recognizing it. And I did a lot of videos for a while on acknowledging when we're getting that guidance. But for some people, they don't recognize that they're getting it or they feel like they have to dissect it. So there's so many layers. I'm being guided to go into this in a bubble chart at some point. So recognition, acknowledgement, recognition. What does it look like? saying this for my own notes. I'm going to pause this <laughs> so that I could write it down. Um, and then keeping that open and not overthinking it. So when I get information, it comes in all forms. And sometimes we think that it has to come through voice. I listened to something recently that I was guided to. It just came up and popped up on my um, feed on YouTube and I was literally not going to listen to anything, but I thought I had to listen to it. And it was Rudolf Steiner. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to, Ru I think it's Rudolf Steiner, S-T-E-I-N-E-R. And he just came up on my feed. And so I subscribed and he was talking about his concepts of clairvoyance. And he was saying, it was very fascinating. I'm, I'm gonna add it. I think I added it. So if you look at my playlists, it's on one of my playlists actually. I think I already added it under tools or awake science. Um, I invite you guys to check out those playlists if you're interested. A lot of videos, I haven't updated it. Some of them are old. And they're just things that I glean that I am um, acknowledging are synchronistic for me or recognizing that they are um, 
helpful tools. It doesn't mean, by the way, that I'm 100% in agreement with any of the videos that I've saved. I always have a certain amount of, hmm, I am, I feel that, but that isn't, a, I'm never 100% with anybody. Well, a few friends that I have that are, we're in that same awareness of things, but that doesn't mean that I will ever feel like that's the one and only truth for me. Why am I sharing that as well? Because sometimes we can get a message, our intuition gives us this message and we feel like it doesn't resonate with us at that time, so we might ignore it. And sometimes that message isn't necessarily for us. Sometimes that message is for um, someone else. <laughs> so I just am sharing this because I've been recognizing that this is something that's been um, asked um, in quite a few conversations that I've had recently. So what do you do with it? And a lot of the things I wrote two years ago, I'm being guided to post now because that's when they're relevant, even though there is no time. So start a journal, you know, keep it in um, a journal. I had a dream journal and I opened it up one day and I dreamed about something that happened. It was so insignificant. And this is something I think is very important from my perspective. Things can seem really insig insignificant. Um, I wrote this dream out. I thought, why in the world am I dreaming about these people who I'm not even, right, really close to? And a year later, it ends up that this person ends up staying at my house in a very similar circumstance um, I dreamed about. Nothing. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like I dreamed about um, some major event or trauma. But that's the thing is it doesn't have to be major. That's something else I wanted to share. Some of the information that we get or some of these synchronicities are just breadcrumbs. They're just there to show us, yes, you're being helped. You're getting guidance. Yes, you're online. Yes, you had a dream that came true. So keep it going. Keep feeding it, right? Don't, don't um, overthink it. So I looked at that and my ego side was like, oh great, I had a dream about some person staying at our house and I dreamed about something that would happen. It was like silly stuff, but it was pretty detailed and pretty specific and super random, but it's not random because that helped give gift me the ability to look and remind myself I was getting these messages a year ago. And this was insignificant. Maybe if I read through some of my other dream journals, I can see some of the things that were maybe a little more significant for me. I'm using that as an example because that's how spirit works oftentimes. It's not always in your face, hello, <laughs> written across our forehead. Sometimes it can be. Um, oftentimes the messages I get are very subtle and they they involve a lot of code and they involve a lot of visuals or sometimes I'll hear, hear certain words and those words are meant to trigger a certain response if I'm working with someone or to trigger a curiosity for myself or for whoever I'm working with or just in general to look into that word. And what does that do? Well, when I write something down, it anchors it into this reality. When I look up that word, I see how the words have been changed over the course of our history. I get to rework the energy around that word. I get to fit it into a new vocabulary structure that harnesses the higher frequencies that I am activating because that's how I am communicating with this living language. In addition to that, I get to expand and see the branches of all the words, the where it goes into, and it creates a mapping system that then 
uh, activates my pineal and a higher potential for all of the memories that I can utilize and bring up to then further my understanding of the message that I'm receiving, if that makes sense. Maybe somebody out there will go, will, that'll help. So I could use the word integrity and I could look that up. In fact, maybe we should play with that. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time on my phone. Um, all right, let me, let me just play. Um, for example, I might get information. Okay, I looked it up. I had to get a quick sip of some ginger beer. Mm. Whew. Okay. That is gingery. Um, integrity. Most people think it's ethics, right? Or holding a sense of, and when you go back and just look up the word, um, oops, on Google, it says steadfast adherence to a strict moral or ethical code. So I might work with someone and say the word integrity is coming through. Um, but in, if I play with that, I see it as integral, integrating. I see it as integrity. I mean, I could, and it, for somebody else, they might hear into something, in to get something. It's different for everyone. But um, the state of being unimpaired, soundness, the quality of being whole or undivided, completeness. So a lot of times we wouldn't think of the word integrity as being complete, but integral, an, a, a, an integral part of a solution is a completeness, right? It's needed, it's necessary. So I love playing with that a little bit. And then if I look up the root of the word, it's innocence, chastity, purity, blamelessness, a sense of wholeness and perfect condition, truth. A lot of times we associate integrity with truth, of course, morals. Um, but I would see this as innocence and purity. So I might be speaking with someone. It's not that they don't have morals. It's that they haven't found their inner child. They aren't feeling they're, that they're pure. They're feeling like they, they're not able to integrate that inner child with the, with the feeling of, of adult adulthood, so to speak. And it's different with everyone. I might be working with someone else and the, the energy behind the word integrity is very different because perhaps they just did something that they don't feel proud of and they didn't have integrity in it. And it's hanging out in their field, so to speak, to be integrated. You know, I might see that word sitting up in a tree dangling, you know, and it might have a certain color associated with it. I'm sharing this because intuitiveness, everybody's got it. Some people just aren't aware of how to use it or that they're, or that they're, they're um, receiving it, right? So I might see it dangling the word on a tree and go, okay, well, what does this mean for you? And I might be guided to ask that question. Whereas with others, I might be guided just to say the word. And they might just automatically say, oh, I did something recently that I wasn't very proud of. Um, someone I'm dealing with isn't showing me integrity. And then that'll branch off literally into the root system, into the mapping system of the energetic field to give us a better idea to play in that, to see where we can integrate that energy, where we can bring us back into wholeness, because that's essentially what this is all about. Um, sometimes, I mean, and this is just one example of many. I've had people with, um, you know, some of us might be seeing, uh, for example, the letter K. Is that pota I think it's potassium. Well, let's just pretend that the letter K is potassium. I worked with someone and that came up. And then I looked up certain vegetables or, you know, it could be that we might be working with someone. You might do a body scan and and see a certain thing, like um, let's say you do a, ba a body scan and you see an apple, right? Well, that could mean a lot of things for you. It could mean that you need more apples, right, in your world. It could mean that you are um, having throat issues if you're a male, the Adam's apple, right? It could mean that you are um, needing more fiber. What, it, what, Ha what do apples have in them, 
right? It could have something to do with the original sin, so to speak. I'm using all of these examples because it really is about symbolism. I wasn't planning on going here, but this is something that I think is going to be coming up for a lot of people that are really activating their pineal and um, third eye. Sometimes people think it's like this specific answer. And while that is true, sometimes it is, it can lead us into so much and it becomes more playful because if we have the answers given to us, yeah, sometimes that would feel easier, but I've sometimes had the answers given to me and you can tell someone, well, you need to do this, this, and this. But if their ears aren't on and they're turned off, they may not even hear that. Have you ever done that? You've shared something with someone and then three days later they hear it from somebody else, you know, and they go, oh, so-and-so told me such and such. And you're like, I've been saying that for years now because it wasn't ready. They weren't ready to hear it. So sometimes if you're working with someone, including yourself, you may, there may be something that the guides, your higher self, source, whatever we want to call this energy is trying to share with us. And the only way they can get through is through a certain type of, um, I'm hearing linguistic calculator. <laughs> so it has to add up to fit in to the geometric equivalent of where you're vibrating at, so to speak, from one, from one framework, from one reference point of words. So just be aware of that and, and the more um, compassion we can have for ourselves because all of us are trying to figure this out. And just because we talk to someone who, who has that ability, they don't know you like you do, right? And it could mean something different. They could. Um, misinterpret some things and so can we sometimes I misinterpret my own messages about me and I go oh, of course that's what my guides are trying to tell me right however the more that we play in these frequencies it's not just about the answer it's about the process it's about learning it's about the experience and when we play in this way the experience becomes the answer. I'm getting emotional. And that experience, that answer that we thought we needed to hear may not have been the one and only answer. It might have been more about the interaction between someone else and yourself. It might have been about the interaction and discord, like the our discourse, <laughs> the conversation with yourself. Because when you weave that in, it lights up the board in a whole other way. I had a whole, oh, my video was about marquee, lighting up the marquee. It's like we light those things up and then we're able to see what the marquee is telling us at different times of our lives from different perspectives um, and in different presentations. So I hope that's been a little bit helpful or insightful for someone watching this. What else? Um, I wanted to share too, it's easy to get lost sometimes. <laughs> sometimes in your eyes. I'm, I'm hearing. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's easy to get lost here. The light, the heat, I am complete. Um, I never really sing songs on key. <laughs> I just belt them out. I can't even believe I can sing after this last bout of upgrades. Um, but we can get lost in translation. We're trying to translate and we're trying to figure it out. Why, why? And sometimes it's just about that peripheral vision, if that makes sense. We might be seeing 11-11, 11-11. Sometimes it's just about us experiencing again and having that peripheral vision and notice what's going on around us rather than tunnel vision and just seeing through um, one perspective. And it's not just using our eye, our ears. It's about um, one of the things that Rudolf Steiner said, and I, this, I knew it, but you have to hear it sometimes from somebody else, right? Is you can, you're, 
he's saying that you're sensing it through all your organs. And this is the message that I've been getting. And back to synchronicity at the beginning of this video, I've been getting this message about the organs. And when I, I even said it in my previous video, the organs, the organelles, the organization, the organ like playing an organ, a pipe organ. And what happens is then your body is an organ and it organizes this cellular communication. So it was beautiful. He basically had mentioned that your liver, for example, is part of what your antennae, all of your organs communicate with each other. So really there is no separation in the ways that we can get information, receive information and give information as well. So that's something that I was like, ooh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. For many of us that are healers or that's part of what our path is, so to speak, we can focus only on, let's say the liver. Okay, we gotta clear the liver. But most of us understand when we work with the biofield and the all the fields, the emotional body, the causal body, the etheric body, right? All of that is part of it. It isn't just about one particular thing. Although sometimes that treatment of that one particular organ can be very beneficial as well. So it's um, not getting lost in figuring it all out sometimes. It's just sitting with it. Um, and I was trying to figure out the upgrades and activations when I was traveling. And my team was like, no, just take it with you and unwrap it a little bit later when you feel ready to. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and watching these videos and just kind of sharing in this experience with one another. And um, um, yeah, I've got so many emails to catch up on. So thank you, um, everybody that's emailed me. I've read most of them and I just have yet to respond. So thank you. I have started doing sessions again. Um, and I plan on doing more videos of answering more questions that I, that I feel I can answer. And it's always from my own perspective. There's a lot of questions that I just don't know. From what I work with, I can give a version of, of what I see. Um, but that's a whole other video. But shortly, <laughs> One of the biggest messages I've been getting lately is more about what we know, what we think we know is changing. So a lot of our history, as we know, has been, re has been rewritten. But because we're changing in this now moment, we're also changing, <laughs> I'm hearing, in thou moment, right? In the whole mov moment, in the whole movement. Everything moves and shifts and changes. So in theory, a lot of what we've experienced shifts and changes because we're shifting and changing. So our perspective shifts and changes. So while there are literal, I talked about this in my previous video, pieces of history that are true, that doesn't mean that, they're, that the truth that they hold or carry is truly understood because it depends on the perspective that you're in when you're reading it. So there could be a whole chunk that was never ever discussed in any teaching, esoteric or otherwise, that might come up and it might change all of those teachings. And for some of us that could shake our very core and for me, that's exciting. <laughs> but for some people, that can be very scary. And that'll be another video again. I'll go into more detail. But I just wanted to kind of send that out there because we might start seeing that there's certain, I'm hearing transcripts that are coming up that we see have been rewritten. And all of a sudden, the real words are coming up and you're like, wait a minute, that changes the whole past. So we do know this about our ancestors. But how far back in a circle does this go? Therefore, in the future, wouldn't if everything's a circle, everything's a spiral. This could be a, just a fun conversation topic in general. So I'm just going to end on that note <laughs> to just kind of recognize that big shifts 
are happening. And as things shift, so does the center where those things originated from, from one perspective. <laughs> um, so in love and light, guys, um, <sighs> namaste. <clears throat>